Welcome back everyone. We're going to continue with our core data integration with SIF UI. We already covered the fetching part, adding part, and also updating part. And the part that is remaining is the actual deleting part. So let's go ahead and see how we can delete a post using core data and SIF UI. Well, the first thing we have to do is we have to make sure that our view is allowing us to delete or to perform the delete operation. So how do we do that? Well, let's go and jump into our content view. In the content view, you can see that we are using a list to build up our view, which is composed of titles and other stuff. One of the things that I mentioned earlier on, it's never really a good idea to use title. You should use something more unique like a post ID, a unique identifier. So let's go ahead and see how we can use that also. If you go and check the on up here, we are calling the fetch all post. And if we go down to our core data manager, you can see that we have post ID, we have get all post, and we have a post. If I go ahead and check out the definition of post, by opening up the model file, I can actually see that I have a post ID. So I can use it. Okay, so let's go back to our code, which is content view. Now, one of the things that we want to do over here is that we want to swipe right to left to enable the delete button. Whenever you're using a list and if you want to get a delete button, it's a good idea to use a list, but use a for each uh, function inside this particular list. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. I'm going to remove this portion for now and going to just use a particular, a very small list. There we go. And now inside the list, I can use a for each and I can do the same thing, post list VM, which is post list view model dot post, and the ID, meaning the differentiating factor, will be the post ID. Now, obviously, we have to make sure that there is post ID in the post view model. Post in, and then we can go ahead and display simply the post dot title. Let's go ahead and jump into our view models and check out the post view model. You can see that we also have a post ID over here. Great. Okay. Now we can go ahead and change this. We can say navigation link, the destination in this case, and a particular label. The destination in this case can be anything that you want. I'm just gonna call this post detail view. In order to use a post detail view, I need to pass in a post. I already have the post, so I'm just gonna pass it in. And in the content, we can display anything we want. I'm just gonna go ahead and say post the title. This is all the same thing that we have done before. Nothing is really new. It's going to create a list and inside that particular list, we will have a text control and we can click on that. It will do a navigation segue to post detail view. The part that we want to do is the actual delete part. So we can go ahead and now call on delete on the for each and we can perform self dot delete post. Now obviously there is no function called delete post so we have to implement that function. So let's go ahead and try to implement this function. The delete post will be responsible for deleting the post. We'll go over here and we will go ahead and implement the function. Delete post at index set and it is going to be index set and it has to have this particular signature or else it's not really going to work. Now inside the delete post we need to get access to the individual ID, the index, so we can get the actual post. So I'm gonna go ahead and say index set, the actual variable, dot for each. And using the for each, we can get the index. So basically if we have selected two items, we will get two indexes. 
and then using the index we can use post list view model dot post passing in the index to get the actual post. This is the actual post that you want to delete. And now we can call post list view model dot delete post, which by the way does not exist, passing in the post. It is a responsibility of the delete post function, which will be in the post list view model to act forward the request to someone else who can actually delete the post. So now let's go ahead and jump on to our post list view model, which is right here. And we will go ahead and implement the delete post function. So we'll begin with delete post, and it's going to take a post view model, which will be a post view model. It is going to return us something like say a Boolean. And now we can actually use the core data manager to delete it. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do this. Try core data manager dot shared manager dot delete post. And we're going to go ahead and say post that you're trying to delete will be a post VM dot post. That's the post which we are deleting. And we can even create a property which will tell us that if it's deleted or not. So deleted equals to false, but after it has been deleted, we can say deleted equals to true. And if you do have any exceptions, we can catch it, catch the exception. And we can simply print out the exception, localized description, and finally go ahead and return the deleted. Now, obviously there is no function called delete post in core data manager. So we still have to go and make sure that we are implementing the delete post function. So let's go ahead and jump into core data manager. And we can go ahead and implement the function somewhere over here. Function delete post, which is going to take post of type model object post. And that can actually throw an exception self dot manage object context dot delete the particular object, which in this case is post and don't forget to call save again. Let's go ahead and build this. We may have some issues and that we need to fix. Uh, let's go back and fix it. So you can see we have a delete post now returning a Boolean. But if you go over here, you can see that we're completely ignoring that return value. So what we want to do is to use that return value to do something. Probably refresh the whole thing because once the post is deleted, we want to fetch the updated post. So deleted equals to false. And we will assign deleted equals to whatever we are being sent. If it is deleted, then we will go ahead and say post list view model dot fetch all post. So if the, it is deleted, then we are going to make sure then we, uh, that we are fetching all the post and updating the user interface. All right, with that in place, let's go ahead and run it and see if you're able to delete a post. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and run this. There we go. And let's go ahead and add another post. So I'm going to say over here, hello to JavaScript. And the body will also be, let's say, hello, JavaScript. And we can see that they are being saved. I'm going to try to delete the hello Swift. And you can see that when, uh, when I swipe from right to left, now the delete button is actually appearing. And we have deleted both of them. Let's go ahead and run the application again. And there we go. You can see they are completely deleted from our database. So now you have learned how to do the insert operation, how to do the delete operation, how to do a fetch all operation and update operation. Now the next part I'm going to cover will be the relationships. One post can have many comments and comments can belong to a post. Now the next section on relationships will be available only to patrons. So if you have not become a patron, let me show you how you can become a patron and support the channel.
If you want to support my channel and get access to the exclusive videos, then you might be interested in becoming a patron. Simply go to patreon.com slash azamsharp and sign up for either the silver tier or the gold tier. Make sure that you check out the features or different things that are available for each tier as each tier provides different access and different materials. By becoming access or becoming part of the patron, you will get exclusive videos and ad-free videos and you will also be supporting my work. Thank you so much and I really hope that you enjoy the video.